Hi, it's Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Let's talk new makeup releases. So I'm still not back home. I'm at my friend's house and I'm, I'm on the floor. I'm just gonna scooch over a little bit and we will throw pictures up here of the makeup that we're talking about. Makeup Forever has relaunched their Ultra HD foundation. It still has 40 shades, it's $43, but this new one is supposed to look like skin under any light. It's supposed to be easy to apply, medium to full coverage. It's supposed to blur imperfections. It flexes with the skin so it won't settle into lines, it won't cake up. It's supposed to be waterproof and sweatproof. And I'm like, really? It comes in a glass bottle. What's funny is I used to be the sort of person that the minute you made a claim, doesn't travel into lines, doesn't cake, doesn't, I used to always believe it, purchase, and then be disappointed when it did what it says it wasn't supposed to do. And, and now I'm 47, I realize the older I get, the more I'm like, I'll take it with a grain of salt. I'll remember that my skincare that I wear underneath has a lot to do with how things are going to wear long term. And also everybody's skin type is different. Everybody applies makeup differently. If I was a professional makeup artist with, you know, makeup forever, maybe I could get it to be sweat proof and waterproof and all of that. But I think this, sign, this sounds interesting. I have purchased so many foundations in the past several months. I just can't get another one. I can't. I can't. So I'm probably going to pass on this, but I would love to know. Some people have been diehard fans of the HD foundation when it launched in 08. Then they reformulated it and everybody was mad. And some people fell in love with the reformulation that they did several years back and they expanded their shade range from a smaller number to 40 shades. And now it's gone. <laughs> and so they have this new formulation. I'm curious to know where you land on this. Is this exciting to you? Is this something you've been looking forward to? Or are you frustrated that they changed the formula? yet again. There is a new release from Physicians Formula. This is called their Bread and Butter Collection, and it has some face powders like a blush, a highlight, bronzers, and it looks like they also have a gloss. I don't know that it's available on their website yet, but it looks like you can find it in some Walmart stores. Now, super cute. Yes, 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 but I can't remember the last time that I, on purpose, purchased Physicians Formula. And I think part of that is because for a drugstore brand, it's not terribly affordable. And I also feel like sometimes it's really good and sometimes it's not. The reviews have been, it's awesome. And the reviews have also been like, oh, don't waste your time or your money. And the last time I bought anything from Physicians Formula was their butter bronzer, which I don't have anymore. So I, I probably won't pick this up. What are your thoughts on Physicians Formula? Do you look forward to releases from them? Do you trust them for everyday makeup products? Let me know, I'm curious. I always love when there are new lip products released because lip products are my favorite thing. And there are some new ones. These are all high-end ones that I think you can get at Sephora. So one, there is a new shade of the Shine On Lip Jelly from Tower 28. I have the one in, I think it's Cashew, and I, I love the formula because it's not greasy, it's really thin, but I always feel like it's a little brown leaning on me. I'm pretty fair, my skin I feel looks best with a little bit of a rose lean to lip products, to cheap products. The minute something is brown or almost peachy in tone, unless it's a blush, I love a peach blush, but if it's kind of brown lipstick with a peach undertone, I don't always look good in those things. I like them when they have a slight pinky nude lean, and the new shade is called Pistachio. It looks so pretty. Now, I don't need any more lip gloss at the moment, but if I ever have to repurchase a Tower 28 lip gloss, I'm going for pistachio for sure. Merit also has a new lipstick. It's available at Sephora. It's their signature lip lightweight lipstick, and it's supposed to be sheer. It has a satin finish, and it has the benefits of a balm. And when I think about that, I love the idea of a glossy, well, this really wouldn't be glossy, it'd be more like satin, but a lightweight, comfortable lip product. I am wearing something that's a sheer glossy but lipstick today. That's what I'm looking for, especially as we head into warmer months. I feel like I rely mostly on my matte lipsticks for cooler months, you know, winter time and fall. And the minute, you know, we get into the sunshine, I want that sun reflecting off my lips. I want it to look juicy and plump and fantastic. And I am curious about this. I don't 
know that I need it because they're $26. I've never tried anything from Merit. If you have, let me know. These look interesting. Looks like Lawless has a new shade of their Forget the Filler Lip Plumping Line Smoothing Gloss. <laughs> That's a long name for a lip gloss. Um, I don't know how much these are. Um, this one is sold in a set, so it comes with a lip mask and it's $36, so you get the new shade and a lip mask, but I probably wouldn't get the set. I already have two products I rely on for keeping my lips hydrated overnight, and I don't know that I'm ready to try something else when it's still gonna take me a long time to burn through what I have, but I have been really curious about these uh, plumping lip glosses from Lawless. If you've tried them, let me know, and this shade looks super pretty. There's a lot of lip products out there. Looks like Makeup by Mario has released something new. This is their Satin Matte Lip Cream. But I was thinking satin matte lip cream. Is this going to be kind of like the M Cosmetics Infinite Lip Cloud? It's supposed to be a comfortable cream that kind of cushions your lips. It's supposed to be blurring. It's supposed to be smoothing. I was like, uh, yeah. And these satin matte colors have a whipped mousse-like texture. They have oils in them to help soften and nourish the lips. And they're $24. Looks like there are three shades. And I, I don't know. I don't know. I normally am not a liquid matte lipstick person, but these sound kind of nice. I've never tried anything from the Makeup by Mario, but I would be curious. I don't, I don't know that I'm gonna pick these up, but these definitely have me curious and I wanna see reviews on them. But if you have any recommendations of products from the Makeup by Mario line I should try, let me know in the comments down below. But these are beautiful and I think these would be interesting. If you've ever been a fan of Viseart, but you didn't want to spend the $80 for one of their original 12 pan palettes that had, uh, you know, all mattes in them, I think it's really great. They had just come out with the same product in a smaller, like their smaller 12 pan eyeshadow palettes that come in cardboard packaging. And they're, it's basically the same thing and they're only $40. I know I have two of their larger original, you know, plastic packaged, um, professional makeup artist for your kit palettes and I'm never gonna use everything up in there and at $80 it's kind of cost prohibitive to go and get you know all of them if you're not a pro makeup artist so they are coming out with these smaller size palettes of course there's less product in there but you would never probably use it all anyway they have their neutral mattes their dark cool editorial brights warm and their milieu so i think it's really cool that they are bringing out smaller size palettes and they're really catering towards the average makeup lover and not necessarily just pro artists natasha denona has beautiful new shades of her lipstick this is the i need a rose i never tried any of her i need a nude lipsticks i heard really good things i hear her liner is really nice she also has a gloss and there are three new shades of pencil gloss and lipstick let me know if you've ever tried any of the natasha denona lip products what your thoughts are and your recommendations would you say that it's one of your favorite formulas, or is it just okay? Because I know that <laughs> uh, Natasha's prices are, are a little bit more than everybody else. These are already out, they're from Glamlight. They are a collaboration with Hershey's, and they are eyeshadow palettes that are shaped like Hershey Kisses, and they have some really pretty shades. I have never tried anything from Glamlight. I hear the formulation is really beautiful and it wears well, but a lot of their products have colors that are way too bright for my comfort. Um, I, I Thinking about like their, uh, was it they have a cake one, their donut one, their taco, their burger, their pizza, they're all really bright, punchy colors, and it's not what I like. I like a really soft neutral, and I was looking at these, there's a couple of ones in here, I was like, maybe, but the truth is I probably won't get these. Let me know, do you have any Glam Light eyeshadows? Do they last a long time? Do they have a short shelf life? Do they give all the life and pigment that I see other people talking about all the time? Let me know in the comments down below. Ofra has a new collection. It's their Lotus collection, and it has an eyeshadow palette for $39. It has a Blossom highlighter for 35. That's a really expensive highlight. Isn't that expensive for a highlight? I don't know, maybe some high-end highlights are that or more, but I, I always thought of Ofra as just a little bit more affordable, 
maybe not, but it looks like they have something new, something that they have not done before. This is their Pure Glow Finishing Powder. These are also $35. And they're their first ever illuminating finishing powder, and it gives a natural radiant finish. What's interesting here, they have light, medium, and deep, is I'm looking at the swatches of these. I can't tell which is the highlight and which is the face powder. And I don't know, because I, the one thing I love about Ofra's highlights, they are dazzling. They are blingy. They are, you know, signaling aliens from space bright. If that's their face powder as well, I don't know. And as a 47 year old, I have, you know, crow's feet. Uh, the closer I get like to my nose, if I'm putting on highlight here, the more I have orange peel texture. I usually take my highlight up to over the arch of my brow and I do have lines across my forehead. Like there's a lot of places I have to be careful where I put highlight. And if this powder is supposed to be illuminating, um, I don't know if it's friendly for the 40 plus. If you get it, let me know your thoughts. I feel like it's pretty, I'm curious, but probably not enough to pick it up. Too Faced has something new for summer. I know the spring collection was that it was the one with the butterflies. It looked cute, did not lure me in. They have um, some new matte bronzers. And I don't know if it's like, what's different about these? These look like they're regular chocolate Soleil bronzers. They have the natural chocolate, the chocolate matte, and the milk chocolate matte. Was their original milk chocolate not matte? I used to love the milk chocolate bronzer that was like my the favorite shade for me for a long time but I haven't purchased it in a while definitely not since they changed their packaging which was years ago but those don't necessarily look new to me what did kind of catch my eye and then I instantly was like nope not for me is that they have their born this way sunset stripped eyeshadow palette this is laid out in a very similar way to uh, their spring palette to their born this way natural nudes palette to their teddy bear palette it doesn't come in the metal packaging it doesn't come in that tin um, it's really thin and streamlined which I really prefer and these are definitely warmer toastier shades I feel like you're getting more of like a butter pecan um, some really intense bronzes in here and some darker browns with maybe even almost like a charcoaly black shade fun and nice and all but these I, I'm over a warm eyeshadow palette. And if it's gonna have warm shades in it, these are too warm. These kind of oranges and terracottas and kind of like all of the ones that lean a little bit yellow. It almost reminds me of banana powder. That doesn't look good on my fair skin. So this is probably not for me at all. And are they just trying to push their chocolate Soleil bronzers again and saying, and I don't know, maybe these are new shades. I, I think these are shades that are already, maybe it's the natural chocolate that's the new one and everything else is what they already had in their existing lineup. Whatever it is, this is a no for me. Despite the fact that I'm a Bridgerton fan, I am not at all excited about the collab between Pat McGrath and Bridgerton. They did that release earlier, uh, was it in January? And then they extended the range. Now they have two lipsticks and two lip liners. Uh, first of all, they're not for me because they're pinks. <laughs> and I like a really specific pink lipstick and I don't know that these are them. These are too pink, too Barbie, too bubblegum, too little girl. I, I don't know if these are your colors. Great, it's just not for me. It doesn't make me excited. And the other thing is at the price that they're gonna be, these are probably gonna be like what, $36, $38 a lipstick. I've never really fallen head over heels for the Pat McGrath lipstick. Is it a good lipstick? Yeah. Is it $36 good? Mm, give me a Lisa Eldridge, give me a YSL, you know, give me a Gucci lipstick. I don't know that I need it at this price, but I do love the formula of the lip liners. The lip liner is beautiful. If you find the right shade for you, this is definitely a no for me, but I think it's interesting that they're continuing on with that Bridgerton collab. Odin's Eye has a new collab. You've probably seen it out. It's with Angela Nyquist and it's the Hella palette. And oh, I like Odin's Eye. I have one of their palettes, the Alva palette, and I think it's beautiful. These colors are definitely not for me, but they are so Angie. Uh, the greens, the pinks, the grungy tones. It's beautiful. It's just not my makeup aesthetic, but I love that she has an opportunity to collab with Odin's Eye and the, the formulation of the eyeshadows is beautiful. So if these are your colors, this would be really cool to have. 
Looks like Patrick Ta is coming out with new shades of his Major Beauty Headlines Cream and Powder Blush. I have one of the Cream and Powder Blushes. I really like it. I also have one of the Cream and Powder uh, Bronzers that I really like. I think it's great. I think that three of the four new shades he's come out with came in a holiday palette where it was a trio of powder and cream blushes, but then they just released them as singles, which is more enticing to me because I saw it at the holidays and I almost got it, but I don't know that I would use everything in there. I think that if there was one shade, because I really do like the formula, I might be interested in picking that up. And there are also new lip glosses from Patrick Ta. There are a lot of new complexion products out there. Uh, there is a new Stay Naked Quickie Concealer from Urban Decay. I don't know a lot about this. I don't know what their claims are. It doesn't say that on Trend Mood, but what's interesting is it has a really chubby doe foot, like, you know, Shape Tape or all of the other concealers out there. I feel like every Shape Tape did it and everybody was like, we'll do it too. But on the other end, it looks like it has either a blending sponge that's at an angle or is it a small brush? I don't know. I usually don't prefer the applicators that come with products, even high-end products like Urban Decay to blend things in. So I don't know. If you have tried this, I think it's already out. Let me know what you think. LYS has a new concealer as well. It's their Triple Fix Brightening Concealer. There are 25 shades and it's $18. LYS is one of the more affordable, I would say high-end brands that you can get at Sephora. I've heard great things about their foundation, about their powder, about their both powder and cream products for the face. I have been wanting to try this brand and I just haven't. It's supposed to be rich and creamy and to visibly brighten, conceal, and nourish the skin. And it's supposed to be skin-like in appearance. I like all of that. If I'm looking at the swatches, is it just me or do these look like they have a slight, slightly gray undertone? Maybe I'm just looking at the lighter skin swatches. I feel like the ones on deeper skin definitely don't have that. Well, some of them do. I don't know. Let me know if you are interested in the LYS brand. Is this intriguing to you? Are you planning on picking it up? Have you already? Do you like it? I would love to know more. This is one I'm thinking, do I put this on my list for the spring Sephora sale? Kosas has a brand new foundation product out. This is their Revealer Skin Improving Foundation and they're touting SPF 25. Here's what I'm just gonna have public service announcement. Always wear a dedicated SPF because if you're counting on your skincare or your foundation to give you that SPF, remember that you need to wear half a teaspoon, that's a lot, a foundation to get the SPF 25. And the Skin Cancer Society, what is it, the American Society, whatever it is, they recommend at least SPF 30 so that you're not getting enough here and then you would have to wear a lot. <laughs> so just wear a dedicated SPF 30, SPF 50, whatever it is, and then just put stuff on top. That'd be great. Is it bad to have an extra layer? No, but don't count on it just from your foundation. But this is supposed to be a skin loving, medium coverage SPF foundation that has hyaluronic acid, niacinamide, peptide, squalane, vitamin B, arnica, and caffeine. Wow, they are really making this kind of like skincare with foundation included. This is interesting. It's $42 and there are 36 shades. But just like I was telling you, the LYS looks a little gray, like that concealer. This one looks a little yellow. The cap on the foundation bottle, I feel like, did they take their inspiration from there? Everything looks really yellow. Really? I'm hoping it's just the lighting or the images or the post-production they did on these images because that would worry me. Unless you have a really warm skin tone, this might work for you. But I'm a neutral gal. This would not, I don't know. I might be hard pressed to find one. A lot of people love the Kosas concealer and I would definitely want to be shade matched in store. I wouldn't feel confident enough just choosing a shade online. I know these are already out, but I'm going to tell you I have been intrigued and I didn't know, am I going to get one? Am I not? It's the new Fenty lipstick. So Fenty has refillable packaging. I love. And I feel like, you know, for a high end lipstick, they're not that bad because the case is $12. The lipstick is 20, which makes it $32 for a lipstick. I feel like the packaging is very luxe. I just don't know that any of the shades are calling to me. I feel like these shades are definitely ones that a lot of people are going to love. I feel like they're neutral enough to work for a wide range of skin tones, just like all the Fenty products. They, they have a ton of stuff that's going to work for you no matter what your tone is. But I don't know that these are, they all look very 
neutral and they all look very brown. And the one that is like, ah, the NVP, which is the red, the bright, bright red. I have so many red lipstick. If I can, can't buy another one, I must still have at least 30 red lipsticks in my collection. I can't justify another one, but I do think that there's a good chance I'm gonna pick one of these up come the Sephora sale. I just don't know which one yet. If you have any recommendations, let me know. But I, I like that it's semi-matte. I love that it's refillable. I love that it's supposed to be creamy, smoothing, plush texture, long wear, without being drying. I feel like we're getting a lot of lip products now that are less matte and more, you know, glossy and comfortable. I think we're all wanting that right now. There is another concealer on the market. I don't know. I think this one was, I could have picked it up in early February from Ulta because I'm a platinum member, but it is their new Boing Bright On Concealer. I haven't tried a Benefit concealer since the erase paste like more than a decade ago i know they don't call it that anymore but it's the one that comes in the jar um anyway this is supposed to brighten the under eyes it's supposed to hide dark circles with color correction pigment make sure the skin is hydrated with a serum like formula for a healthy looking under eye glow it's supposed to be buildable long wear waterproof there's 12 shades Talk about a terrible shade range, 12 shades. It's $24, this is a no for me. And the, the shades look more like corrector shades to a certain point, and then they just start looking like bad choices for almost anybody. This is, mm, this was not well done. Sorry, Benefit. I think I'm gonna leave it there. There's a lot more that we could talk about, but this video was already way too long. I always am curious, because I mean, there was a ColourPop collections we didn't talk about. There was stuff from Makeup Revolution we didn't talk about. I feel like there is a lot of stuff that gets released that just is kind of like, to me, it's like that chatter in the room that I can just easily tune out. And those things don't really catch my attention one way or the other. But the minute something makes me go, what? Or like, mm, that's what I have to talk about it. So I would love to know if any of these makeup releases or ones that I didn't talk about make you have that feeling of, Ugh, or oh, really, mm, tell me more. Even if you're not planning on buying it, let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Have an incredible day and I will see you again soon. Bye.